Thank you, George, and thanks everybody for joining us here today. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, something that has become very important to our local economy here in Lycoming County. Uh, the natural gas industry, uh, similar to what uh, Jeff was sharing, uh, came about uh, here about now 10 to 12 years ago uh, with activity in our market. Uh, we did not have any uh, natural gas or uh, oil activity uh, prior to this. Uh, and we're very excited to be able to see how this has grown over the past decade or so. Uh, with regards to the investment by the industry, obviously job creation has been key for us, uh, being able to get a better uh, understanding as to what those jobs really meant to our community, uh, especially at a time when you looked at when this uh, industry started to develop. Uh, it was during an economic talent downturn uh, and being able to provide job opportunities for people to jump into a new industry uh, was very fortunate for us to be able to have that in play. You know, you look at the investment over the past uh, decades, uh, this industry has been engaged in the community, not only from the perspective of uh, looking at where they're spending their dollars uh, for the economic impact side of it, but also the community quality of life aspect. Uh, the industry has been engaged in activities such as Trout Unlimited, uh, Wild Turkey Federation, those types of things uh, that really uh, provides what we value here in Lycoming County uh, with regards to outdoor recreation amenities. So from that aspect of it, you know, you'll see the industry involved with those things. Uh, they're involved in stream restoration, a number of different things uh, here in our market, uh, which is exciting to be able to see that it's just not the economic drivers that are, are important to this industry. It's also that quality of life aspect of it because, you know, from that end of it, you know, those who choose to live here in Lycoming County have a great appreciation for the outdoor amenities. And that's something that this industry has really uh, taken in and really found value in being able to being able to support for us. Uh, in addition to that, if you look at it, there is that economic impact. Uh, you know, you look at downtown Williamsport, uh, the number of restaurants that we have here uh, have grown significantly because of that. Uh, our shops, uh, even though we are in the midst of a pandemic, uh, our shops uh, are actually in good shape as well. And we attribute that to the industry being here, being able to see that investment uh, that was made by local developers uh, to take advantage of the opportunities that was coming from the gas industry. And it was them putting their own capital at risk uh, and being rewarded from that, which is good to be able to see that. Um, you know, the other thing is we are in the midst of a pandemic. And I can tell you right now, you ride around uh, a number of the hotels and I'll be happy to say that there are a number of white pickup trucks in those hotel parking lots. And the fact of the matter is we need those right now. That is one of the hardest hit industries, uh, the hospitality industry in particular. And you look at our hotels, they're actually running at 70% capacity. You look at a number of other markets across the country, across the Commonwealth, they're not able to say that. You know, why is it? we're fortunate enough to be able to have this activity here in our backyard. And it's just not the hotels. It's also the restaurants uh, who are benefiting from it because, you know, they're not eating at the hotel restaurant. They're eating out at local restaurants here in the community. They're also buying things from different shops in the area as well. So from that aspect of it, you know, it's been a great industry for us. Uh, we're looking forward to continuing that relationship with the industry and being able to see where we can grow and prosper from it. So, with that, I'm enjoy looking forward to the rest of the conversation this afternoon. Again, from that agriculture standpoint, I think people forget it. Just it's one of Pennsylvania's top industries. And you might see the city of Washington or Williamsport, but around it, it's beautiful farmland. And, and help me give a little bit of an understanding, Jason, as to the Williamsport, Lycoming County area from, a, from an agriculture standpoint. Yeah, you know, 
Alan touched on it, uh, and, and we experienced the same thing here with regards to the farming community. And we were fortunate enough to be able to see that because I actually, you know, when I was a kid, worked on a farm. And so I had a great appreciation for what it takes to be a farmer, especially nowadays. You know, it's not, you know, a, an easy task to be able to take and operate a farm and own it and, and put at risk your life. And so from that aspect of it, being able to see the industry come in and to be able to see the royalty payments going to these individuals, very hardworking individuals um, that, you know, it, it is true. You know, it is, you know, waking up uh, before uh, dawn and, and working past uh, dark uh, most days, especially this time of year. Uh, the fact of the matter is, uh, you know, they, they are now able to enjoy a better quality of life because of this, you know, and, and the thing about it is they're not, taking and, and going and spending it on places uh, and activities outside of the area, it's being spent here in the community. You know, they're, they're reinvesting in their farms. They're upgrading their technology. They're getting new equipment. You know, that, that's the, the, the exciting thing is to see that they are not just walking away from the farming way of life. They're able to reinvest in that and actually do it at a profitable manner now. And that's, that's exciting to be able to see that because, for so long, this industry has not been able to do that, at least here. So, Jason, from the same standpoint, you know what I mean? What you're seeing, you know, again, I know I'm familiar with new parks being developed in Susquehanna, I'm sorry, in uh, Lycoming County. Uh, give us a little sense as to what was there already and what's been developing and how you're seeing it from that commercial industrial standpoint. You know, the, the, the nice thing about this industry was that uh, for a number of years, we were out marketing uh, land uh, that was challenged. Uh, you know, from our end of it, uh, we didn't have the resources to be able to tr build out true industrial parks. Uh, we had land, there was utilities in the neighborhood, uh, and that was about it. I mean, I, I hate to say it that way, but that's what we had at the time. Um, we had, fortunately, uh, the industry came in. Uh, our industrial properties corporation had somewhere in the neighborhood of about 400 acres of land. Uh, by 2011, all of that land was sold and uh, it has been developed, which is great to be able to see that. Uh, and the nice thing is at this point in time, um, it's all in the tax rolls. Uh, from that aspect of it, you know, everybody wins because we were able to get it early on into the KOZ program, which would allow us to be able to justify uh, selling it at a low price for the infrastructure that needed to be brought to the property. Well, fast forward, we sold it off. Uh, the infrastructure is there. Uh, and not only does, it benef does that infrastructure benefit uh, just the industry, it also benefits the residents in the area as well because they're consumers of the water, the sewer, driving down those prices uh, from that aspect of it. They're not, you know, you look at the ancillary businesses that have spun off as well. Uh, we have a natural gas power plant here in Lycoming County because of that. You know, that would not have been here if we didn't have the industry here. And while it's not a massive employer uh, like a coal power plant is, it's a great employer uh, and a great community partner uh, to be able to have them here. So from that aspect of it, you know, we've seen that, uh, that development. Uh, you know, the nice thing is today, we now have resources to invest into other properties uh, to be able to work with community partners uh, to be able to get projects done. So from that aspect of it, it's a win-win all around. And, and to stay on that just for one moment, I know that one of the pieces that you and I have discussed in the past has been having those power plants also then means you have an availability of inexpensive energy. So again, what goes into developing uh, economic development is to your point, do we have the water? Do we have the land? Do we have the workforce? Do we have the energy to run them? And hopefully, that's something you're seeing that's uh, benefiting your region. We have, and, and it's not only just the cost, it's the reliability aspect of it. You know, more important than just price is reliability on energy. 
And so from that aspect of it, I can tell you now having uh, a power plant in our backyard uh, provides that reliable, steady power because PPL has been able to reinvest in the infrastructure from that aspect of it. And being able to have that infrastructure reinvestment, you know, PPL's done, done a great job in our backyard making sure that uh, all the lines are up to date. They've got all the, the triggers in place to be able to make sure that there's nothing uh, that's gonna flip that uh, puts somebody out even for you know a, a second. You know, that little blip shuts down a, a major manufacturing operation and it's very costly. So from that aspect of it, you're exactly right. You know, being able to have that isn't just, hey, we've got gas in the backyard, we've got low price, it's also reliability. Jason, I'm gonna start with you on this one because uh, the question has to do with, it's, it's more so on the education front. Now, again, you guys could take it into a workforce if you want also, but you know, there's, there's a question out there saying, you know, what have your areas experienced as it comes to education from K through 12, as well as secondary? Now, I'm very familiar with Penn Tech and what you guys have going on. Why don't, why don't you start there and then we'll get to Jeff and come back to Alan. You know, the, the nice thing about uh, this industry also has been the understanding that uh, it's that community partner aspect of it. Um, you know, you look at uh, what you've done uh, to be able to make students aware of careers within the industry. You know, those kids who are in that middle school, high school that, you know, they need to start thinking about what their future is going to be at that point in time. Uh, making the industry available for tours. Uh, we've taken advantage of that. We have an education committee uh, and we've got a great partnership with our local school districts. Uh, whenever we've needed tours, uh, you know, you pick up the phone, you arrange a tour and, and give them the opportunity to see, you know, where those things that they're learning about in school, that math, that science, that STEM, where that's actually gonna be applicable uh, within their everyday life. And it's not just your industry. I mean, we do take them to other things as well, give them the opportunity to see manufacturing operations and other types of services that we have here. But, you know, this industry uh, is one that is for somebody who doesn't want to go to college. And I know we're gonna talk about Penn College, but for that kid who's like, you know what, I don't want to go on to school. I, I'm done with my 12 years and, and I want to get into the workforce. You know, that's a great opportunity for a kid to be able to step in there and work their way up through. And, you know, the exciting thing is I actually have a kid. Uh, she graduated a couple of years ago from Williamsport. The downside of it is I'm paying for college right now, whereas she has a very good friend of hers, uh, actually a couple of them that got, it, got jobs in the industry right out of high school. And you know what? One just bought a house. And, you know, that's, that's the type of thing that this industry does provide that opportunity for the kid who's, you know what, I need on the job training and skill sets. And I want to go into the workforce right after school because they can work their way up into the industry. So that's exciting to see, you know, but for those kids who do need to be able to have that opportunity to go to school, you know, we've got Penn College here in our backyard. They're a great partner with the industry as well. Everybody knows how they've been able to work, not only just here in Lycoming County, but in, you know, counties across the Commonwealth. And, you know, they've gone and, and really helped other schools be able to understand how they're doing it. And, and it's nice to be able to see that we have an institution here that has been able to benefit from this industry being in our backyard. And it's been able to grow their presence uh, and really shown the value of a STEM education for those who need to go on to school beyond just high school. It, it looks like we have somebody in the audience who's familiar with what you have going on because the question is, you know, could you uh, ask Jason about the investment from Shell, i.e. The, 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 you know, the facility that's being built on the western part of the state, which is the cracker, but it's my understanding that Shell has invested in Penn College likewise. Yes, they have actually, you know, that's the exciting thing about this industry. 
you know, a trying to get people to understand that what's taking place in Western Pennsylvania is going to benefit the rest of Pennsylvania. You know, you look at what's happening in Butler County, which is great. You know, if it could take place in my backyard, I think we all would say, hey, we all want it. But guess what? It's not feasible. It doesn't make sense. Uh, but we are still going to be a beneficiary of it. Uh, Shell has partnered with the school. Uh, they've invested in some of uh, very technical equipment uh, on the plastics end of it to be able to provide them with educational training uh, tools to be able to get students what they need in the plastics and polymer world, uh, which is great to be able to see. They, they gave, I forget exactly the dollar amount, but a rotational molding piece of equipment is not cheap, I can tell you that. And so being able to have a state-of-the-art piece of technology that students will be able to work on, and they'll go into places where they'll be hired to go take on jobs, and they'll find that same piece of equipment. It's not like they're getting a hand-me-down piece of equipment. This is state-of-the-art investment, and it's great to be able to see those types of partnerships being able to provide students uh, the opportunity to learn hands-on. And, you know, that's not directly going into the natural gas industry. That is an offshoot of it, but it's not directly into it. What are we missing? What, what do you want to make certain that people understand in the 10 years time frame of things that have happened uh, that, that may be overlooked, that may be forgotten or not even, um, again, directly impacted to the industry, but has actually lifted the county uh, that you're in? And George, actually, I'm going to step back to that education a second, because one thing I, I neglected to mention is the, the opportunity that you brought uh, with the mole you. Uh, you know, I think that is something that uh, almost got missed in this conversation uh, that I think is going to be very important once we get schools back into the, the swing of things. Uh, you know, we had a taste of it, and I know that the educators were excited about it because while it did focus uh, or it emanated from your industry, the STEM skill sets that it, it focused in on wasn't just applicable to your industry. It, it, it applied to a number of different uh, applications. Um, and so from that aspect of it, you know, I think that's something that uh, I wanted to make sure we got mentioned because that's something that you all helped spearhead. And I know we're looking forward to a, a point in time when we can start bringing that back out to schools. So, um, but with regards to uh, your question, I will tell you one thing that I think uh, is missed um, that we didn't really touch too much on is the involvement that you have as an industry on things that aren't directly associated with what you do. You know, the quality of life uh, here in our area you look at it, we've got the community theater, we've got the community arts center, you know, those are arts related activities. And when you see that the industry sponsoring this event there, this play, this performance, you know, that's something that it doesn't directly benefit you, let's be honest, you know, it's from the perspective of, we're just a community partner. And as Jeff had mentioned, you know, it is. The fact that this industry is partnering for things that don't directly benefit you. It is something that, yes, it does enhance the quality of life. It gives your employees an opportunity to, to experience something, but a 170 seat community theater league um, is what we've got that I know I've seen sponsorship from this industry in events in the past when they've been able to operate. So, you know, those are the types of things that I think, you know, seeing the arts the support that you provided for the arts, for other cultural amenities here in our area is very important and I think needs to be recognized as well. And, and it's with that point of sharing the story that you know one of the questions came in from a, uh, from a, a member of the audience saying, you know, with this being an election year and your communities being little microcosms of what's going on, has there been any impact, or I'm sorry, has there been any outreach from either side of the campaigns to, to, to take a look and see what's going on, whether it be Biden or Trump, the idea of asking folks like yourself who were on the ground seeing the upside, has anyone done any outreach to you? 
Yeah, no, I actually agree with Jeff on this one in terms of, you know, trying to, to take the Democrat, Republican, independent, whatever party you are with, uh, and, and more focus on the fact that this is about jobs. Uh, this is about reliable U.S. generated energy, uh, reliability. Uh, and I go back to the fact that, you know, industry uh, needs this. You know, you look at, you know, we, we have a fairly strong manufacturing base here in our community. And so from that aspect of it, you know, being able to know that they're going to have a reliable energy source, uh, whether they need electric, whether they need natural gas, it's here, they have access to it. And from the perspective of Republican, Democrat, everybody should be supportive of the fact that this is keeping jobs, uh, good paying jobs here in our area, whether they're directly related or completely unrelated uh, to the natural gas industry. It's still something that plays a key part in being able to make sure that we have that energy here to be able to tap into.